All right, I'm Bob Kokora. Uh, I work at Cisco in the Noro Group. Uh, I'm Ivar Lazzaro. I work in Cisco in the Noro Group. And we also have a special guest, actually. We have the Group Based Policy PTL, Sumit, there, that now is forced to help us. <laughs> and quite a few other uh, Group Based Policy uh, collaborators. All right. So the um, agenda here is really to try to get people familiar with group-based policy hands-on. You know, you may already have seen presentations at this summit or previous summits that present the models, uh, talk about, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, this is really kind of, okay, I want to try it out, but I don't know where to start. We're trying to give you just enough experience to, to kind of get things running um, and find your way around a little bit. I don't know if we'll be able to get through everything we intend. Uh, or maybe we'll get through that in half an hour and, and uh, can talk for the rest of the time, or whatever. But uh, we're going to start out with just a very quick overview of GBP and talk about kind of what it does and what you need to know kind of to get through the lab. Um, then we've already got a head start on the second step, really, of distributing and launching the VM image. The third uh, step is deploying OpenStack with GBP included. So we've got a DevStack branch that has uh, things configured for that. Um, if, you, if you've done it already, it's probably fine. If not, uh, we'll do that. While that DevStack is running, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, the basic model of GBP. So if you're not already familiar with that, uh, you'll know what, uh, what we're doing. And then uh, the first exercise is, is very much a you know, step-by-step, -step, very simple scenario. We'll walk you through kind of everything you need to do. Um, Second exercise is a, a little more complicated app, kind of using that same knowledge, where we'll kind of let you work your way through it using what you've learned. Um, we're here to help as well. Uh, well. Then we'll talk a little bit about external connectivity. Uh, given the variety of different machines and stuff, we're not really expecting to get that working. Um, you know, just networking setup for that can be the trick uh, under VMs. Um, we'll talk about service chaining and then do an exercise related to that. And then, uh, depending on how far we get, there might be homework. So I see that there are new people coming. So welcome to the Group Based Policy Lab. And uh, if you guys have some free USB stick, you can pass them down for the installation. So many of you already copied the files, but let's go through it again and uh, for the sake of record. And um, so you will be provided. Um, a USB stick. You will find a GP hands-on folder there. Just so, just copy that on your local system, and um, and you will find an OVA in this folder that you can use with VirtualBox or VMware Fusion, uh, or with whatever else hypervisor you that, that can support that. Uh, there is also one special USB stick around which has a QCOW2 disk that we can pass around for KVM. So if you need that, just let me know. I will try to, to find that and give it to you. Um, <clears throat> so to get ready with the system, we, we would like you to, to install the VM, to, to go on the dev stack directory on the home. So you will see login is GBP and password is GBP for logging in, and, and run dev stack with the stack sh script. So once we are all more or less at that step, we, it will take around five minutes to be ready. So we will go through the, the GBP model and we give some, some explanation. So I would like to know how many of you are, uh, are not at the stack step yet. So you, you got to get there and a couple more. OK. OK. I just want to mention so this, uh, if you are using Fusion, and I think also with KVM, you probably want to comment out the lines that are setting IP addresses to want to the local host address. Um, I guess VirtualBox does some, you know, port port uh, forwarding and redirection stuff to to basically let the one the, the local host of the VM be accessible as local host on the host. Um, yes. The other other uh, hypervisors don't tend to do that by default. Okay. So how many of you are already running Stack? So it, it, it's up and running, right? So is there any question at this point? Someone that's not able to install it? It's done. You know, what's, what's the final? Yeah. At the okay. bottom, you'll see. I'm at Keystone, so okay. and it's running a lot of stuff. So I just want yeah. to 
Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so you will see that's done because at the end it's going to say stack is done. Yes, yeah. or something the, like the that. One thing to look for there, there'll be a URL for connecting to it from Horizon. Yes. And uh, you know, you want to make sure that you can connect to Horizon from that URL and right. things are up. Uh, so the SSH instructions are these. Uh, you're using VirtualBox, right? Yeah. So you gotta use SSH minus P 2224 GBP at localhost. And it doesn't work? Right. Oh, what can go wrong? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. If you if you use boxing, you want to try the man and you need a USB, I have it over here. Yay. For people Say that again, please. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, what, what system are you running? Uh, um, oh, I don't know if I can edit this here. Can we edit this and add that to the Yeah, I'm trying to. How, okay. do we, how do we get this in edit mode? Exit show. Uh, no, we're going to exit here. It, it's going right, to come it'll back. We'll be right back in a moment with that. While he's doing that, if you're, using, if you're not using VirtualBox, um, you'll want to log in to the console of your VM, do IP adder or, or if, if configure or whatever, get the IP address, and then you should be able to SSH to that uh, just on the normal SSH part. Like me? Oh. Okay. Ah, smack is adding here. What about why am I smack? Okay, this dash O straight. No spaces. Okay. Go ahead. Come on. Okay. Alright. Thanks, man. Yeah, when DevStack runs, it shows the URL for connecting to Ryzen. Why do you say this at last minute slide? Slides have been ready for at least an hour. <laughs> Anybody uh, running into difficulties need need a hand? How many of you still have DevStack running? How many are done with DevStack? And how many haven't launched DevStack yet? All right. That's okay. Okay. Um, let's let me talk to the model for a little bit here while while we're getting everybody caught up. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Um, actually, the model. Yeah. I think these order, the order switched around a little bit here, but that's okay. All right, so um, it's just a quick introduction to group-based policy. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's currently a set of StackForge projects, and we're working towards inclusion in, the, in OpenStack as part of the Big Tent effort. Um, we've had some review of, of that and some feedback, and, and uh, you know we're taking that to heart and uh, working towards that goal. Um, 
currently made up of four projects. There's the service itself, the GBP service, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, there's a Python client, uh, you know, which also has a command line interface, just like uh, pretty much any OpenStack project. There are also add-ons to Heat and to Horizon. So um, you know, we're trying to cover the, the, the full user experience in integrating with, you know, with those. Um, currently, the de development of uh, group-based policy has been trailing OpenStack release cycles by a you know, month or two, I don't know, three. Uh, so we do have a, a Juno release that's kind of complete and has a stable branch and, and so forth, and has been packaged in various distributions. Um, we're still working on the Kilo version. Uh, we should have a very usable Kilo milestone release that can get packaged for distributions uh, very soon. Uh, what we're working with today is kind of, you know, fairly current stuff, but uh, yeah. I think it's on a branch. So that, It's uh, master branch. Oh, it's master? Okay. And um, you know, as soon as possible, the master will then start tracking Liberty, and uh, and we'll have a Kilo stable branch as well. Um, the goal of group-based policy is to provide an intent-driven API, uh, currently for Neutron, and and basically this automates and hides a lot of low-level networking details that application developers and deployers and and uh, so forth generally don't need to worry about. Uh, so things like creating the networks, subnets, routers, security groups. Uh, configuring services and so forth. Um, you can use all this stuff, but you don't really need to, need to know the details to use it through group-based policy. Um, so basically, the, the group-based policy API is a set of RESTful resources, you know, just like you're used to, uh, that are intended to capture the intent. We'll see the model in a few, mo in a few minutes that, uh, that introduce those resources. Um, basically, we're talking about connectivity between groups of application components. Um, so groups is a key concept. Um, within those groups, you have policy targets, we call them currently, that basically have neutron ports. So generally, it's VM, VMs are the members of those groups, and the, their network ports are, are, uh, are the policy targets that we're talking about in those groups. Uh, so in addition to just controlling connectivity, you know, allow and deny, we're also able to redirect traffic through high-level services, such as load balancing, firewalls, anything else that, uh, that you need. Um, we also right try to separate the concerns a little bit between the people developing an application, the people kind of managing the deployment of an application and, and maybe controlling, you know, responding to security events, things like that, and the per person administering the cloud and kind of providing sets of uh, services and things that are available. Um, did, did they cover all this? Can you go back to the question? Which one? This? Mm -hmm. Oh, if you're, if you're, uh, you can get it directly. Don't forget the branch there. Let me know when you're ready. Sure, man. All right. Part, maybe. On the next slide, the, the next couple lines, we're talking about drivers. So basically, group-based policy architecture is built with drivers. Um, there's a resource mapping driver that implements everything in group-based policy purely in terms of uh, standard Neutron APIs and the, and the resources there. Uh, there's also the possibility to develop other drivers that are optimized to, uh, to work with um, back-end systems that know something about intent, which is, is definitely a, uh, you know, an upcoming uh, approach and, and thing, Open Daylight and other projects are, are, are working there. So this is intended to be a, a front end for all those sorts of systems, as well as regular Neutron, so you don't need anything special. It works with Open vSwitch, Linux Bridge, you know, any backends. Um, okay. And currently, the, the service part of it, where the, the REST resources are implemented, is within the Neutron server. Um, we're working to, during the Liberty cycle, to separate that out as a, a separate service, separate you know service endpoint that would be advertised in Keystone, and eventually, evolving to where this grouping and policy concepts and intent-based APIs can span more than just Neutron. Uh, so compute storage and other things could, could fall into, into that uh, model. So it's very actively being developed. This is the kind of thing we're really looking for people interested in this to, to get involved in, particularly people coming from some of those other, uh, you know, if, you're, if your focus is Nova, not Neutron, but you are interested in intent, would, would love to, to get you involved. All right, the basic model, um, let's see. 
We can start with kind of the, there's a, these are, I guess all the black, uh, they're not all black, but uh, most of the names on here are the names of REST resources. L3 policy is kind of a, a overlapping, non-overlapping address space. So subnets and so forth get allocated within that. Um, they're rootable within that. And tenants can create one or more of those. They get created for you by default, so a lot of times you don't even see them if you just need one. Um, the L2 policies down here, basically the, the policy groups that you see are contained in L2 policies. Normally one will get created for each of those, but if you want to share them, you can. Uh, that controls you know, your, your broadcast uh, domain and things like that, that a lot of times applications don't need to worry about, but when they do, they do have the, the ability to control that. Um, so policy targets are the items that we are grouping. So right now, a policy target um, basically owns and, and references a neutron port. Um, so VMs that use policy targets from the same group are part of the same group of, of VMs. Um, a policy rule set, generally also, often also referred to as a contract. Uh, we may rework some of the naming as we go here to, to bring things in sync between various open source projects that are all working in the space. Uh, basically, you have format you see below where classifier is going to match certain kinds of traffic, so based on uh, port numbers, you know, protocol types, those sorts of things. Um, and then an action. Action could be allow. It could be the default is deny, so you don't have to worry about you know, you, I don't know, can you explicitly deny? I guess not. No, it's a whitelist. Yeah, it's a whitelist. <laughs> um, but in addition to, to accept, you can basically redirect through a service chain, and that's kind of the model for, for doing things like load balancing and so forth, and, and incorporating that into the intent of that into the model without having to get into all this sort of imperative approach to building up uh, load balancers and configuring them using APIs and so forth. So the, the relationships here between the policy rule set and the groups is that the groups consume any number of rule sets and provide any number of rule sets. So let's see what that looks like. Did I miss anything you want to add? No. Okay. okay. Any questions on this? Is this sort of enough to, to work with so you'll understand what we're doing? They will have many more questions by trying it, I assure you. Yeah. Okay. So, OK, so if I'm the database tier in a three-tiered app, I'm providing a rule set that describes access to the database. If I'm the app tier, I'm consuming that. Right. So basically, um, uh, now we are going through the first exercise, right? And here, we will work a lot with groups and policy rule sets. So this is, uh, this is going to be a very basic session. For this first exercise, we will work through, and we'll, I'm going to show you what to do in the API in order to get a very simple scenario. And then we'll go to a more complicated thing. Now, the most important thing you need to know here is the concept of group and policy rule sets. Group are these, uh, as Bob said, are a uh, homogeneous collection of, of policy targets that they all behave the same way. And how they behave is defined by the policy rule set. So to get back to your question, when you provide a policy rule set, it's like saying, uh, this is the interface you can, you can use in order to connect with me. Interface in the sense of a contract, right? So you can like say, this is what I expose. Whatever wants to consume it can. And then if the underlying infrastructure allows connectivity and the policy rule set is defined, is the, is defined correctly for, for, for this traffic to happen, then you will have you, you will be able to consume it and, and finally consume your workload, basically. So uh, how are we with the installation? Is DevStack done? Most of you? All of you? Is there anyone with the, I see you guys coming. If you want to grab a USB stick, you will have to trail a little bit, but there will be people uh, giving you instructions. So let's connect to Horizon. Uh, You can reach Horizon in port 8090. 
So let me know if from your local browser. If you're using VirtualBox, if you're using VMware Fusion, you can directly use the IP address of your VM to reach it. OK. Let me know if there is any issue reaching Horizon. Are we set? The open stack login, right? Yeah, the open stack login. Then to, to log in, you have to, uh, so the, the login is admin, and the password is abc123, which is missing from the slides, of course. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's the output. Of the, so admin, abc123. Yeah. I don't see a whiteboard or anything here. Mm, no, there is not whiteboard. No. Yeah, it does show you at the end of the stack yeah. script. Yeah, there is a way to SSH. It's, it's in this slide as well. Let me go. Let me just add very quickly. Yeah, somebody suggested that. There's some people run into issues, and that might help. But if if you didn't do it and it's working, don't worry. Yeah. If you SSH in, SSH in, you're okay. Ah, that might be what we need. So, uh, uh, this slide. Yeah, admin and ABC one two three. Uh, okay, but I don't think these slides are posted anywhere right now. Yeah. So, can you? We're doing okay. Uh, do we have an for this? <laughs> now? Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. And yeah, let's have an ether pad. And then we post a link to this uh, you know, uh, presentation on that ether pad. If you can note down the ether pad. Okay. Okay, so you can access this heater pad, group-based policy, hands-on. Admin, ABC123. I'm doing. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then I'll try to put in the uh, link to the slides as well. <laughs> this is unrelated. How many of you were able to log into Horizon? OK. Perfect. So let's wait a little bit more. So the objective for this first exercise is to have two very simple groups and being able to ping an SSH VMs from one group to another. So we're going through a very basic setup. And, and then we will complicate it a little bit based on what you learned. And you will be left alone playing with, the, with GBP. Not alone, not literally, but <laughs> we are a group. Uh, 
the the URL, the header for the URL. Does yeah. It it's group-based policy hands-on. The URL. Here you go. So there's a link to the P. slides there as well now. P. Maybe. Let it set up for everybody to read. Ready to move on? Yeah. Can we start? OK. So on Horizon, you will see a policy tab on the left. So under Project, you're going to see a policy tab. So go there and go in the Application Policy sub-tab. So the, the, the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to create a policy rule set. So as, as a first step for, for this inter interaction between groups to happen. So again, the policy rule sets define the set of policy and the interaction between two groups. A group will be a provider of this rule set, and, another, and other groups will consume this rule set so that it, they can consume the, um, the workload they offer, basically. So let's go here on the Create page and Create Policy Rule Set. Decide a name, for instance, test. And then, do you find this? Is all right? And you'll go next, and you can decide a set of rules that have to participate in this policy rule set. Now, there are some rules here that have been pre created by DevStack uh, for, um, you know, for, for the sake of making this more simple. But ideally, the, there is a separation of concern in this model for which um, the final user of the system will actually find even policy rule sets sometimes already created and maybe even shared by an admin. So when you create this policy rule set for now, don't, um, no, it's fine. So you can add the ICMP bidirectional allow rule for now, and then we will go into the detail of, of rules later. And then you can click Create. So with this, in the Application Policy tab, you will see your policy rule set test that has been created. Now go in the Group tab, and uh, we can finally mess a little bit with the main object with, with the main object of this model, which are groups. So you can already create a group. You can call it, for instance, provider. Let's create the provider group. And, uh, and this provider can, in, in the next tab, can provide the test policy rule set. So le let's get to this, to this point. I don't know how many of you are already ahead or are behind. Yeah. Behind? Where are you? OK, so the policy rule set is created? Yes. OK. So you go on the tab groups, which is up, right up the application policy. 
And then you can click create or add group for creating a new group. Yeah, let me. Okay. Okay. Right. Is the group providing the application policy? Okay. Now, how, how are we with the group creation, the first group provider? Is it, are we done? OK. No, the, so the, the provided policy rule set has to be test in this case. Or you can update it later, of course. But one step. The, this policy rule set is the one you just created, and it's providing ICMP for now. It's allowing ICMP, actually. If anybody gets stuck and mm. needs help, raise your hand. Is that? Yeah, you can just go on with the defaults for now. So the only important thing is that you provide test, and then you can go next and finally create. So don't get confused with this. Okay. If I created the application mm -hmm. policy, OK, I test, it. yeah. So it's OK, I see a PE. That's OK. So then you have to okay, select go to group, right? Uh, right. <laughs> I didn't create any rule set on this. Do we need to create a rule set on this? I think you do that as later steps. Do the group first, I guess. So this is the. Mm -hmm. this oh, wait, wait, wait. Do I need like to update the policy rule set? See it as highlighted like this when you select on it and then hit next. I see yeah. yeah. So wait, what are we creating a policy rule set now, right? The first group yeah. we are creating is provider, yeah. yeah so it's just it's called provider. Well, okay. Yes. Did you did you create a policy rule set? Yeah, yeah, test. Okay. Yeah. Is this correct? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Now I go to what are the policy right? rules. Yeah, those are the ones that are pre-existing, okay. and that's the rules. I'm sorry. That's one I happen to create, I think. Oh, okay. Huh? So okay. But okay. Now I go back to groups. Groups. Yeah. We create a group. Which yeah. one policy? Which policy? Uh, provider. This one? No. I don't know. What, what did the instructions say? No, th this this is a this is a different step of yeah, the provider must have been it. Okay. So when you hit next, you will you will find the network policy tab. You just click yeah, create yeah, you from there. Pick which. So you're going to provide te uh, test, but not consume test. Yeah. I guess. So I think you cl highlight that, and then if you hit plus, does it? No, you don't want to consume it. You want to provide it here, right? So I think you only hit the plus over right here. Do it. Okay. Hey. Uh, maybe that's for creating a new one. I get confused on this. No, no, the consume can be empty. So we are creating a group which I provides for now. Command line. Just <laughs> next. Yeah, I guess it's should be okay. You can change them later if it's not right. Policy no, well, Yeah, don't worry about that. Yep. Just use the defaults. Defaults. Create. Create. Yeah, and we can see what happened. Okay. So this we're providing and consuming. See our so we things going. Technically, could go into here. And Are we fine here? Yeah, I think I'm fine. He uh, was just interested in taking some pictures. So, okay. so first so I made this test policy. Yes. Then I, I did this sets. group and walked through and made this Not provider. Provider, per perfect. All right. So uh, now you. I think you can just kind of every, every select and wipe it out, maybe. See what happens. In the group. I'm really not that familiar with the horizon interface here, sorry. Oh, okay. It won't hurt anything. Yeah? Right. Oh, yeah, I see. They all just have oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, in, in the newly created group, maybe. If you click in the newly created group, so fr from the group tab, you, you can click on the name on the group you just created. and and you will find a button which says create member. A member of a group is, in this case, basically a virtual machine which is attached to this group. As you will see, you don't need to specify anything networking-wise. You just create a member of the group. You can specify your flavor, of course. And um, you can specify the instance name and the image. 
uh, but you don't need to specify anything networking, networking related. You just hit create, and <coughs> and the, um, and this this policy target will be created on the on the provider group. So you on the on the group creation. So on the group tab, you will see you will see the group you just created. You can click on the name of this group, and then on the top right, there's gonna be an add member. Or create member, yeah. Maybe. So the creation of the member is the same as creating a normal virtual machine in this case, but just with with this few information. Uh, availability zone should be just Nova, or did you change it? No availability zone found. Okay, can, can you give a look, please, Samit? Uh, this is actually going through Nova. This is just a way for the for the UI to be a bit more group centric, basically. So we are driving the workflow through the group, but you are still able to go through the compute tab if you want and do the creation normally. It is just, um, it, it just requires one more step because when you create the policy target on the group and you get the neutron port from it, you have to do the creation specifying the neutron port to Nova. And this is not available from, the, from Horizon today. Go ahead. So uh, a definition of group uh, is a collection of ports, basically. So the VM incidentally is attached to the port. But it's a collection of ports. Yes, as is today, it's this. The, the, um, the policy target group is a collection of policy targets. In the reference implementation we are showing today, the policy target is directly mapped to a neutron port. So it's, new, it's using neutron resources underneath, and the policy target has a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the neutron port today. The same port can't. No. The same port today can't be member of moment. Uh, this is so. Um, you, are you talking about the uh, what the model can offer or the current implementation? The current implementation with the with the resource mapping driver is basically placing this VM in a given subnet. So your group will be somehow mapped to one or more subnets. The user don't have to to go into this detail. So the user is not going to see it because it's not probably going to be useful for him. Uh, this is where the separation of concerns is, uh, which means that if you change the underlying implementation and you want to do something completely different as far as the connectivity cons is concerned, you will still be able. However, this will require a group-based policy driver to be created for that, right? Yeah, actually, even, so with, even with the re standard resource mapping driver, you have a lot of flexibility. Yeah. There's an L2 policy uh, resource. and. You can pass one of those in when you do a group create, and you can pass the same one in to several different groups, and there, therefore cause them to have the same, be on the same right, L2 the network. Yeah. And if you don't do that, if you don't pass one in, then a new L2 policy and therefore neutron network gets created for each individual group. Exactly. Everything is orchestrated here. So the, the only thing you care about are groups and what policy are applied to those groups. And, but you don't care about networking in this case at all. 
This is actually possible, of course, through the, through the group-based policy model. But this is done at a different layer of, um, a different layer of concern. So there is an operator concern, which we are, uh, we are not exposing right now. So for this lab, because we want to go through very, very simple steps. But there will be definitely in the future more advanced labs in which we show all these operator concerns and how you can actually uh, specify more um, infrastructure related policies. Um, uh, moreover, uh, all the stuff that is happening today, uh, right now, by in the sense of the subnet that are created, the network that are created, or even the routers and so forth, are not just pre-created in this model, but there is actually a mechanism included in, in group-based policy that will take some default configuration that your cloud admin, for instance, could have, have done for, for its tenant. Um, and so every time you create a group, if this group is missing the, the floor and under its feet, basically, this floor will be created by this implicit driver, right. wh which will do all the infrastructure creation based on, 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 the, on, the, uh, on the operator configuration. Right. So that's how that L2 policy was getting yeah. defaulted if you didn't specify it. And similarly, to create an L2 policy, it has to belong to an L3 policy, which defines the IP address space and how that would get split up into subnets and things like that. Uh, that basically gets created per user by default. So yes. if that user has never created one and, and doesn't pass one in, a default one gets created. And you know you can you can look around at the Neutron resources in Horizon there and see you know see the things that have been created. So just uh, let's go a bit faster here. Is the member created? Perfect. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. The policy target has no. Be, yes. Yes. To, we are the so the the yes. Okay. Th this is actually very good feedback. So what is happening here is uh, UI orchestration, right? So what you will do from the REST API perspective is that you will create a policy target, and this policy target may be associated to a port, if you want. Well, or well, this well, port may be created automatically based on the infrastructure that there is underneath. And then this policy target could be used for creating a VM. But it's actually a good point. This step is actually two in one. So this is simply, simply UI orchestration in which your member creation uh, is defined as a creation of a policy target which is in which a VM is planned, yeah. right? So potentially, you could even have, a, you know, using command line, you could use Nova to boot an instance that has two NICs, and each of those NICs has a different policy target in different policy target groups. Definitely. You know, so the, you know, the full richness of what you can do is, is available. It's just the, the user interface kind of makes the easy stuff easy. Yeah. Why actually did the instance count to number two and I get failure? Yeah, that's a bug <laughs> in the UI. <laughs> Damn it, I knew someone would do that. No, so you, you, just, you just use one, number one. It's, uh, it's a problem in, in our UI implementation today, which is not working. But, but you could do that from Nova normally. So if you, if you, if you had to do that from the, from the CLI, it would definitely work. Uh, now, do that again without pictures. And, uh, and this time, the group you create. So let's start from creating the group, not from creating the policy rule set. The policy rule set is fine. But this time, the group you create got to consume the policy rule set and not create. Everything else is basically the same. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, you can launch. Yeah, definitely. Create the member and launch it, yes? Is that? <laughs> Good question. So here we are going through a very basic topology in which we want uh, to, show, to showcase two uh, members of, of two groups being able to ICMP one another without any, without any kind of explicit networking involved. So th this is a, a very simple configuration. Actually, the idea he, here is to get you familiar a little bit with the UI. We will go on something more interesting, more interesting later after this. How can we prove the report we can I'm sorry? Have 
So, uh, so sorry, say it again. I didn't get it. Uh, yes, uh, hmm? we have uh, created the member and created the VM. And so can we show some uh, traffic? You want to want to see traffic, basically? Yes. Sure, of course. W what can go wrong? <laughs> hey. I'm sorry? No, no, the, the, uh, the policy rule set test is fine. Don't create a new one. What you got to do is create a new group. And this group will this time consume the policy rule set. So I should have test over here for your example, right? No, OK, so this is wrong, right? Because this is providing again. Right, so if I edit it, maybe I'm just doing yes. test work for you. How do I get rid of this? See, I have both. So for this, you, you got to go on the, so uh, exit this one. So unfortunately, you got to go on the consumer. And uh, so you got to provide, provide and remove this. So, okay, and then so you go re remove policy rule set, yeah. and you remove the provider here. You, you have to select it, this. I have to like OK, and then save. And then, yeah, maybe you got to update. So no, so consumed. And then you okay. add consumer policy rule set. Let's see, so this is the consumer. Yes, so you got to consume. And select, you gotta select. Oh, I have to select it. Okay. Yes, and then save changes. Okay. Yeah, the, the UI may use some work. <laughs> yes? Okay. Ah, OK. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah. So OK. That's a good feedback. Thanks. So. So today, the policy rule set you are using, and it's only having a simple allow rule in it for ICMP. Um, what you gotta keep, what you gotta keep in mind, which is very important, is that at some point you may change your policy dynamically, and for instance, you may add a new rule to this policy rule set, which says redirect to a, to a firewall and load balancer, for instance. So you can have a full service chain defined with our service chain API. And we will go through it if we have, if we have time today, uh, even though it's not really basic, but, but we can go through it. So the, re the reusability of the model and the fact that you have separation of concern may make your, operation, uh, your operator add constraints to your policy rule sets, or the user itself adding more rule to, 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 to these rule sets. And, um, which, which can basically change almost dramatically your application by just doing a couple of clicks and changing the rule. Exactly. Yes, yes, please do. Also, exactly. Also, of course, um, if you want to have a more fine-grained control of the model for any single exception, any single you know, server, you want to modify something in the port and so forth, you still have Neutron there. So you can still go there, you can still go use Neutron, and it's going to be. So in this case, keep in mind that the whole address space you have as a user is, uh, is independent from the address space of all the other tenants and may overlap. So if you want, you can have even the whole private address space, even just for you, at a layer three policy level. That was explained in, in the first slides. So if, what you ha if, you have, if you really have some specific networking needs, which is probably not the case if you're using a group-based policy. If you're using it, you are just a user and you want groups to communicate with a given policy. You don't really 
may care about it. But if you do, there are operator level kind of APIs that allows you to create different address spaces and use them, or even single subnets to neutron that can be associated to groups. Yeah, what, so what there is a lot of variety. One additional point here is it's really the, the group-based policy that's, that's managing kind of how things like subnets and firewalls, security groups, all that kind of thing are used. And for instance, right now, if you look into detail here, you'll see that for each group that you've created, uh, there's a small subnet allocated. What will happen is as you add instances, you know, those, those will have IP addresses in that subnet. And if you exceed the size of the subnet, a new subnet will get allocated that's also part of that group. And meanwhile, all the security group rules that reference these things are matching those subnets. So when that additional subnet gets added, new rules get added to existing sub. So this is all this kind of orchestration that this is doing for you that if you were just yeah. using Neutron would be extremely complicated. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's all right. OpenStack underneath. Sure. The, this is the final state you should get, by the way. What? This is consumer. I'm sorry? Uh, so how did that end up with the same L2 policy? Yeah, that's, let me shut this off. Uh, so the, the L2 policy, it's, uh, OK, maybe this may be confusing here. But the L2 policy is basically, basically what the groups are attached in, in, in uh, uh, so in the sense of a broadcast domain, right? Which you may not care, like in this case, which is everything done automatically and all your groups are isolated from this point of view. And as a matter of fact, you didn't do it. But if you, if you wanted to, if your, if your operator wanted to provide you some default way of connecting your network, then he could do it. And the layer two policy, so it's like the broadcast domain for the groups. And then there is a layer three policy, which is the address space. I'm, I'm coming to you, don't worry. Is that? Is that okay? I'm sorry? The layer 2 policy run? Yes. Yes. We have a question there? Uh. Huh? <laughs> yeah? There is no way to change this? Yeah. Now, as a matter of fact, we are going to do it now because we say that the, the objective of, of this was to have two VMs that could ping and, SSS and SSH each other. But we just used an ICMP rule. So, okay. so what we can show you now is actually how to change your policy rule set in order to allow this extra operation. So I don't know where you are in terms of groups and providing and consuming the, the policy rule sets, this is what you should see. So how many, how many of you are there? OK, cool. So let's go now and, and, and actually update your, your policy rule set. So um, we forgot to add the SSH rule. So we can go on application policy and edit the test policy rule set you created. And, and you can actually, at this point, specify both the, the ICMP and SSH bidirectional allow, allow rules, <coughs> and finally update the policy rule set. If you, if you want to test some traffic, maybe w we, we may skip this for now. But if you want to, you can go on, on the VM console. And from the VM console, you can try that you can actually ping the VMs and SSH in them after you do this. So this is for homework. <laughs> okay. 
Any any questions so far? One member to multiple groups is not supported today. What? Yes. So the groups cannot overlap as for today. Hmm? The, there are plans around policy tags that may kind of, of bring this kind of behavior you are looking for, or even overlapping groups, but it's, it's really under discussion for Liberty Zone. Okay. So don't use it for policy rule sets, because it's not supported by the current implementation. Uh, because of some issues that there are in Neutron that we are looking for together with the Neutron team. And uh, so what basically does, gi it gives the, the operator a way to create some basic structure that can be used by all the tenants. So uh, the same way in Neutron you can share networks, here you can share almost everything. So you can create shared rules, you can create shared classifiers, shared actions, or even policy rule sets so that when a new tenant comes in your cloud, they will just see, OK, um, I see some policy rule set, and I know what they mean. So they are like web access, or database access, or whatever. So I can very easily create my t three tier app, for instance, by just using what the admin already provided me. <laughs> in order to do that, instead of having the admin every time creating those objects, we can share them. And they are scoped correctly so that having multiple tenants using them don't actually affect each other. So if I have, for instance, um, uh, if I have my tenant with a specific group uh, consuming a, a, web con a web policy rule set, it doesn't mean, it may be, but it doesn't mean that it has connectivity with, for instance, another tenant, which is actually providing it. So the sharing capability will, will Will uh, will scope you around your tenant for for easy resolution. Yeah. So, huh? uh, like was mentioned, there was a, a basic tenant of uh, this uh, this philosophy is separation of concerns. Right? Uh, and <laughs> yeah, that pun was not intended. <laughs> uh, and the separation of concerns is actually a second thing for the app developer being the one who is crafting this policy rule set because that's the concern that he's focused on. Yeah. So the, the simplest case here you can think of as these shared constructs are created in an admin role, yeah. and then they are made available to the admin. So, so it's, uh, and the base case, like what we are giving you here in this lab setup, is where we have pre-created certain constructs, and it becomes easy for us to share. But really, the, the concept and, and, and the, 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 the philosophy goes well beyond that. It's really the separation of concerns that, that is achieved with the was No, so you can share groups. So what can happen is that you could share a group, and this group could be your service. So it will be your, you were mentioning DNS, for instance, Ex exactly. And, you, and, and this group may, for instance, provide a given policy rule set so that all the tenants can consume the, that policy rule set and have connectivity with that group, for instance, and can, and can use that. But in that case, even the group itself may, should be shared. The, we have a question? Yeah. 
OK, that's, that's actually a fair point. So uh, the direction of rules uh, that are always to be seen from the provider perspective. So when I am the provider, I'm the one who decides to, uh, to expose a given interface to the rest of the world, which means that ingress rules are ingress from the consumers to me. And outgress rules are rules from me to the consumers, and bidirectional, bidirectional, of course. So yeah, that's actually a, a very good comment. And the idea is the provider is always the, the, point, the one who has the point of view in the, the, the reference point, yeah, in the policy rules, for the policy rules. Yes, there is. And we will go through it in the next exercise. So uh, I don't know how many of you were able to edit the policy rule set and add this rule. Is it fine? OK. So let's make it now much, much harder, maybe. Or maybe it's just as easy. So we, we want to create now a three-tier application based on the image you see here, which means that we will have a web tier that will provide HTTP, HTTPS, and ICMP connection to whoever wants to consume. Then we have an application tier, which is going to provide HTTP and ICMP. Um, and then we have a database tier, which will, um, which will provide SQL connection. So for instance, you can open uh, 3304 port. and. Uh, and then, again, ICMP in a bidirectional way. So you can see that how rows here are defining the directions. And, and, these, and these groups are basically the group you, you got to create with, with that. As you can see here, in order for do that, you got to create new rules. So we should have here the, the, is the environment ready to show how to go and create new rules? No. OK. So we will show now you, because the only piece you are missing at this point, you already have anything. The only piece you are missing is how to create new rules and new actions, maybe. We had a question there. C can you show them how to, to create a rule, please? I'm, so I'm sorry? No, no, that picture. So we want to create a new rule. Uh, a new rule. So new classifiers and yeah. rules. So we need a classifier. See the two that already existed there. Uh, we'll click on create policy classifier. What protocol do we want to do first? Uh, we can do HTTP, for instance. HTTP. In. Ingress. Yeah. And the TCP port 80. Yeah. Direction is in. OK. We're not sharing, right? No, no, let's, let's not share. We, we could share this one as admins, but okay. we may as well not. We create. So now we have HTTP in. Yeah. What else do we need? Should we do? Uh, we can do HTTPS. Let's, let's try a bunch of classifiers. So a policy rule is composed of two pieces. There is a classifier, and there is an action. Uh, this action uh, in, in the lab we are going to today is mostly just allow. So you don't really need to create a new action. But in reality, it can be much more. Uh, today, we already implemented a redirect action. So you can have um, a classifier that redirects um, to a service chain, for instance, or even to a single service. And we plan of, of, on having more actions, also depending on the evolution of OpenStack, right? So there is some work going on on Neutron about, about quality of service, and that could be another different action, for instance, and so on and so forth. So today we support only two, which is allow and redirect. Redirect is pretty generic, though. So if you have your own services that can be service VM, they can be Neutron services, it can be a lot of things, then you could use it and redirect your traffic there. I, I think there was a question. Here, you had a question, maybe? Oh, no, I don't know. All right, 
So we, we created so a couple policies. Oh, go ahead. Question there. Uh -huh. There was a question. No. Oh, okay. So the the share checkbox checkbox is uh, is allow it's an admin kind of operation, and it allows the admin to create some basic constructs for for their user. So let's say we are now creating a bunch of classifiers, right? But in your cloud, there may be some classifiers that. Almost everyone are obviously going to use, like HTTP or SSH or stuff like this. So the admin could create them and could share with the whole set of its tenants. What was the port number for MySQL? Uh, 3304. Put, three, I mean, we can put. 3304? Yeah. Okay. Oh, 06? Oh, yeah, exactly. There is no real MySQL. The image will get too big. <laughs> All right, so now we've created uh, policy classifiers. We're going to just use the policy action that already exists. Yeah. You know, we're, we're not <coughs> going to create new ones right now. One quick more to describe. Uh, if you click on the protocol dropbox, it shows you a list of protocols. Only DB can use these directly in the forehead. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Yeah.
talk. Through some of this here, just for him to kind of um, let's do just see a time real quickly. Okay, cool. So, this is how you create policy policy rules, which was missing before. You already know how to create policy rule sets, and you already know how to create groups. So, um, okay, we have two we, we have two options here. Uh, we I may put the image we had before, and we can all work on it together. Maybe you can make some groups, and we can walk through your operation more, I mean, out of the stage, which is getting even pretty hot at this point. Or if someone wants, wants to come here and want to show this, like uh, as a new user, to see if you got it, we, we can go that way. Which one do you, pres do you prefer? Is it right? Yeah. Like the drive from the UI? OK. Yeah. Hmm? I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, so, right. th th so there will what? be there will be this need, right? So if we go and see the, um, the, the slides, okay, the, the the slide. the yeah, the policy rule set tab for now it's just yeah. Okay, I haven't created a new one, so we can do go create one for the. There, there is a couple DB more here. Can I delete this? Yeah. Or are they delete. Delete. Well, there might be VMs running on them, but. Set. Okay, so in this case we'll go create a new policy rule set. So the, the first tier of our three-tier uh, three app is the web tier, right? So we're going to now create the web policy rule set. This web policy rule set will allow HTTP, HTTPS, and ICMP, as we were saying in the picture. And so we create it. And now we have the app tier. In the app tier, we said that we would actually allow just HTTP, which is all we need, and also ICMP. So let's create the app tier. And uh, let's choose the two rules. And we have the rule set. Mm. And the DB tier. And finally, there is the DB tier. So let's have DB, policy rule set. And this one is going to allow uh, MySQL traffic and ICMP, and we create it. And 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 then again, um, you made this thing as a user. You could already just have that by your operator, for instance. I'm sorry. Which one? Sorry. Oh, rule set. Yes. OK, so oh, maybe not app. Let's go with one which will. Adding. So let's do this. And update. And yes, it works. No. Oh. I mean, some yeah. of this gets into whether we're doing things uh, as demo versus admin. Can someone give a look at that while it's happening? Yeah. 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 OK, so we created the, the policy rule sets. And now, in order to complete our app, <coughs> we only have to create the three groups. So let's say we, we can create the web group. What does this web group provide? Web service. web service, exactly. Is it consuming anything, the web group? Is it co it's consuming app, exactly. Because at, at be even though the app group doesn't exist yet, it doesn't mean you, can, you cannot already start consuming it. And then maybe the service will appear at some point. And we create it. Now, next group 
is the application group. What is this guy providing? The up tier. What is the up tier providing? Is it consuming anything? All right. Good. Final group database. What is database providing? Is it consuming anything? This time, no. It was a trick question, but you didn't fall for it. Damn. OK. That's all you need. So w w once your policy rule sets are created, so your basic setup is done, for you to create isolated tiers which exchange those kind of services is actually, is actually very easy. So you can create those groups. At this point, we could go on and add um, and, add, and add members to these groups. And so we, we go through the member creation again, just to make sure. Sure. So we have a bunch of groups here. We have those test groups that you can ignore. I'm sorry? Oh, I can sort them? I don't know, like, how do you sort them? <laughs> it, 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 it didn't follow. help so much. <laughs> okay. few minutes left. Should we like launch yeah. maybe the app tier and then look at the security groups for it? Just to sort of oh, sure. So um, as, as an example. Is that? No. no. Today we. Exactly. So let's try again the member creation here. Member, tiny, and we select the image, and we just launch it. So while this member is created, we can show a little bit of orchestration that happened underneath. So this is very driver specific which means that depending on your driver, you can have as much orchestration as possible. But in this case, you, you much simply have basically a router, which is, which is containing your address space. And, uh, and then you have a bunch of networks and subnet that create is isolation between the groups. But how are the policy enforced? Well, that policy is enforced through security groups. And we can see it here from the VM that there are a bunch of rules created depending on, on the policy rules you, you used. So the more complicated the topology becomes without changing at all the complexity of doing it through group-based policy, but the, the, the bigger is this set of rules that you, sh you, have, you, know, um, you have to design and you have to, to, to put on, on, those, um, on those security groups for the VMs. So, the, this, this table may grow much more, especially when having external connectivity, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have much time, so I would, uh, I would quickly go through another interesting feature we have in group-based policy, which is the service chaining. I talked about it a little bit so far, so I want to show you this model. So how do we capture intent for service chains? So in the group-based policy model, what we do is creating uh, so the, the, f the basic service chain uh, construct in group-based policy is the node. So you can go on the network services ta service tab, and you cre can create a node. For instance, let's say we want to create a load balancer. Which is a node of load balancer type. And we can upload a basic configuration file uh, do, do, we ha do you have it on this system? Probably not. Uh, oh, yeah, you do. OK, yeah, the hands on. So All the right. files uh, that you copied off the USB stick. So we are uploading a heat template for the load balancer configuration. In this case, 
using heat. And we create this node. So this node so far is just a logical node. It doesn't mean anything in the real world. But it's, it's useful for being reused or even, again, being shared across different tenants. So we can create a firewall. Again, we select the heat template. Now, setting this up is something that somebody as an admin, in an admin role an would admin be doing. Role would so do, yes. normally these would have been done and available for the tenants to use. Sure, but, but even so, it's just so cre creating a service chain node is fairly straightforward. And, and what is after the chain node? After the chain node, you've got to specify the actual chain. The actual chain for us is the service chain spec. So when you define a spec, you define a collection of nodes in a given order. Remember, again, the order starts from the provider. So when the provider, the group provider provides a service chain, the order, so one, two, third, uh, first, second, third node will go from the provider to the consumer. So you create a service chain with firewall and load balancer, and we create it, we call it firewall load balancer service chain. And here you have the service chain spec. So all of this in the physical infrastructure didn't do anything so far for this implementation. Um, because at this point, we need to capture the intent of using this, uh, this, this service chain. So what happens now is that you can have a new action, redirect to service chain, which is a redirect kind of action. As you can see, you can select which service chain spec you want to use in this case for this action. So you create it. And at this point, you can do multiple things. For instance, you can, you can get an existing classifier and change. Oh, there is a question. Here. Oh, five minutes. OK. You could get an existing classifier and change the allow action to a redirect. And this will change the whole set the whole bunch of policy rules set using that action and, and finally even the groups. Or you can just create a new classifier like HTTP. Yeah, we're, we're going through it. <coughs> Port 80, bidirectional. And the policy rule will be uh, so, <coughs> and the action will be the redirect to service chain. Once we have this rule, we can, for instance, go on the up tier and add the rule to the existing ones. You could even at this point, OK, just add it. Now, since we, since we have existing group, yes, of course. So Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, OK, Horizon crashes? Oh, nice. Oh, no, it actually uh, apparently is there. OK, so maybe that was just an Horizon issue. So since we have groups using those, that policy rule set, group-based policy understood that there are some entities that need a service chain in between at that point, depending on who is providing and who is consuming. So the service chain is now created, in this case using, using heat and neutron underneath between those two groups. So we can go on the orchestration layer, and we can see that there is nothing. <laughs> Oh, there is actually. OK, no, so th that was a, th there was a failure there. Something, something was wrong, yeah. Yeah. So let's try. So the, the heat templates of those nodes provides some configuration for them. So what, what, what would, would happen in this case, but we probably have some UI problem at this point. Um, what happened in this case is that since you modified the policy rule set, and there are groups participating in that policy rule set. All those groups will get a service chain instance, which is a physical representation of the service chain. 
that will be configured using that heat template. So we should have seen that the heat template on the, on the orchestration tab was created, and that all the objects would have been populated in that case. Uh, so as, as for today, we, we have, um, so there again for the service chain, there are different drivers. So today we have a load balancer driver and a firewall driver, but there is a refactor work going on and we plan to implement that for Kilo, in which you can implement your own node driver and we are gonna support pretty soon even uh, service VMs, for instance. So if, if, you, if, you, uh, if you have your, um, your VM image that supports a, serv a service that could be used here, and the plumbing or traffic stitching or steering, depending again on the driver, will be all done, taken care of automatically by group-based policy. The only thing you need to care of are policy rule sets and, group and groups. This is an ongoing effort. Of course, th uh, the one is an effort that will be done together with the Neutron community, right? Because we're talking about traffic steering in this case. And this is an ongoing effort. We have people on our team that are working on it, preparing a, a, a blueprint and an implementation. Uh, but for today, there is, uh, there is a way to stitch the traffic. So traffic stitching happens by, you know, like uh, setting up the networks properly, orchestrating new networks properly in a way that the traffic goes in the right direction. Um, but this will all be, so we're done. Okay, so thanks. I think we are done. We don't have any. Oh, there was any? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, if you're interested in this part, we have to run through it for service chain. You can actually see it in uh, Prasad and their booth at uh, where is it? It's on the in the demo floor. It's in the marketplace on the demo floor at one. Uh, on the first floor, so I don't know. At one o'clock. Yeah, one one ten one ten we have a server. One ten. So they will go in, into the service chain manifesto in which they have switched in. They actually have more services on what I think the service chain is saying. Would you say any follow-up? Can I just use this as the user demo? In the Etherpad, yeah. Yeah, I will do it. Yeah. This demo is linked into the Etherpad, the, the, or this slide presentation is linked into the Etherpad. Okay. Oh, yeah, the, I think the, the can we show it? Show it. Yeah. Okay, so the community is growing. We are looking for more people to participate. Let's grow this together if you liked it. And if you didn't, you, you should like come even more, like, right? I mean, it's <laughs> especially if you didn't like, you should participate. So that's it. All Thank right. you very Thank much you. for participating. <laughs>